Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and now we're going to cover the pro division of the Get Set Go tournament, of course, qualifying round. I'm getting this out much sooner than expected, um, which is good considering I had to go to work early, but I was bailed out because I have a lot of replays on this course from previous tournaments that really helped me get a good bearing on what I wanted to try to do when I got to these holes. So, you know, I save all my replays, which really helps. Um, and then when we get into another tournament, you know, especially a course like this, which I really don't like, you know, my old replays really help me kind of line a few shots up and hopefully they will help you too. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. That would be awesome. It's free to be a subscriber. Secondly, if you like my videos, please take a moment there to hit the thumbs up button and give it a like. It does help me out, believe it or not. So minus 14 here is what I shot. Picked up a drop on hole one, picked up a drop on hole two. Hole one is not the easiest hole to eagle, uh, that's for sure. Hole eight is pretty darn easy, but there's other drops out here. So let's go ahead and just get into the nuts and bolts of this thing right now. Hole number one, we are going to use a hook that we used way back in the day in a tournament uh, with basically the exact same wind angle. So this is really nice because we're able to get within grizzly range of, you know, the eagle opportunity. You know, you could just lay up if you wanted to not go with the hook. Uh, you know, you could, of course, course just take any driver and just, you know, drive right here and then boom, sniper shot here. The bad part about that is you're going to get a really inconsistent ball guideline on the green. Uh, it's always that way no matter what on this hole. So the closer we can get to the hole, um, you know, the less variables that we have to drop this shot, which is why we're going with the hook here. So the hook, that way I'm setting it up. Now I've got a rock nine, so not everybody's going to have that, I know. Some people have an eight, some people have a seven. Unfortunately, I don't get to take the shot with every single club level. That's just not possible when you only have two accounts like myself. But here, you know, you can see me counting the rings. I get a lot of this leg work done, so you don't have to. You know, ultimately when I'm stretched out at max distance here, we do have a good reference point. Look at the right side of my yellow ring. It's right up against that rough line. Okay, now I know there's many different rough lines, so you just have to remember which one it is. But it's basically the one, two, it's, I'm in the second colored rough all the way on the far right hand side there. So right before it gets to the third colored rough, my yellow ring is right there. Then when it falls back down, you can kind of get a reference point of where I'm at now. All right. Now here we're going to go with some overpower, but this is not full OP. Okay. This is, you know, a couple clicks of OP, but this is full curl to the left. And then you're going with a max hook shot that you can get. We're going to clip the fairway here. We're going to hit the rough and then we're going to roll out nicely. Now, the thing that can happen, and it's going to be wind angle dependent, okay? You could get stuck in the rough. And if you do, it's literally no harm, no foul. This is what we're going to call a low risk, high reward drive. The reason that it's low risk, because even if you get stuck in the rough, you are easily on the green for your birdie. Okay, you'll pick up your birdie on a par four. Uh, the reason why it's high reward is because if you can get close to the hole like this, you're going to be at a 0% elevated shot at mid distance of your Grizzly. And here we're going to get to use some backspin and just try to get this thing lined up to drop. But like I said, it is an inconsistent green. You're going to be somewhere around this type of backspin, I think two and a half, but look at that, two and a half back. And look what happens here. So we got to go a little bit less. Now we're going to go two back and at least we get some stabilization. So I'm just going to take the shot here. I'm not going to mess around with it anymore and overthink it. Two back. I'm leaving it about a green square short of the hole. And... You know, we do drop this thing in for the eagle, which you saw on the scorecard. Again, not the easiest eagle, but it is out there. A lot of people will not get this one. So if you're able to pick it up, that'll be a huge start to your round. All right, hole number two. Hole number two, you know, I wish I was playing this one with the Goliath. Um, I think it plays better with the Goliath, but I know a lot of you out there, when I put that poll out, 
wanted me to use the Grizzly instead of the Goliath M Pro, which is no problem. I will adapt to that, and that's what I'm doing now. You probably noticed that here the past three or four tournaments. I've really been using this Grizzly based off a lot of fan feedback. I try to go with the majority of votes. Um, so here, you're going to notice what I'm trying to do. Let's take a look at the spin. One bar left side spin. Now, the only reason why I put this left side spin on here is because on my other account, I felt like I missed this thing by a mile. Now, this 1.4 bars, 1.5 bars of top spin is good. That's why I played both accounts on. But then I added the left side spin, okay? And now I'm just trying to take a look at this right here. These green squares are horrendous to look at on this course. So you'll have to do your best to mimic where I'm at. Here we make our pool, and then I'm going to talk you through what do I think we need to do to pick up this difficult hole in one. So let me tell you, let me show you where the ball goes first. Look at that. Look at that right there. Okay, so we burn the right edge of the cup. Here's what I want you to try, if you're willing to try. If not, that's okay too. You can just try to move the landing spot, but I think that's going to be hard to do because of how inconsistent this, this green is. You see right here, ultimately, this is where I aim, right? What I would do, okay, what I would do differently, if I just had one more crack, I would love to test this. I would get right here just like that, where I'm at. I'm trying to get back to where I was, right there, okay. So I would get right there, and then all I would do is I would click my ball again, and I would keep the top spin the exact same. So remember, 1.4 top. And then I would change it from one left side spin to 1.2. And then I would take my shot. That's going to totally throw off how your ball guideline looks right here. But, you know, that's what I would try to do in my head. I think that would work. But who knows? It may be way off. All right. Hole number three, 10% at max, six top, three left. And what we're going to do here is we're going to line up with our blue ring kind of touching the rough line. Second bounce on that fairway. You see that second bounce right there on the fairway? And even though it's on the fairway, I still clip the rough, but it's okay. The top spin is what's good on this hole. We hit the perfect ball. And then as I said, I do hit the rough and roll out. But, you know, on this one, that's perfectly fine. Like, we're going to get good distance anyways. Um, the distance isn't really a big deal as we're going to be taking a more difficult rough bump on this hole. Now, this hole I'm not a fan of, okay? The rough bump is pretty inconsistent depending on wind angle because, you know, you could get stuck in the sand. You could miss the rough entirely and send a flyer. You just have to be really good at lining these shots up. And so here I go with two bars of backspin with my green ring right there on the rough line, okay? End of the, end of the day, this is too much backspin because I'm getting a wind angle here, as you can see at the start of the hole with um, some headwind. Hopefully you'll get the better wind angle and you'll get more crosswind. But this is too much backspin. I make my pull here. And I hit a perfect ball. As you can see, we do get the rough, but we just, we put too much backspin to get us towards the cup. So just be mindful of that whenever you play hole number three. Hole number four, the shot that you are seeing, okay? The shot that you are seeing here is played 20% at max. Uh, I put in here to try 15%. This is a situation to where, again, I only added the left side spin on this hole because on my first attempt, I was way off to the right. It always feels weird to me adding side spin that goes with the wind. We already have the wind blowing to the left, and now we're adding side spin to the left. That always throws me off a little bit, but here we're going to go two top, one left, and you'll see that even though we add the left side spin, and there's where I'm aiming at, kind of this one is a little bit hard too, right, to figure out because, like, if we take a look where I'm aiming, like, let's say the ball guideline were to actually extend past that, it's like we're aiming, we're aiming to the right, okay, which is good because that's just the way this thing rolls and how it bounces. But here, like I said, you're going to see 20%. So this is like, I think, 7.7 .7 rings. Perfect ball, hit a lot of perfect balls, which is really going to help you learn from what happens. But as you can see here, the speed is good. But even with that left side spin, 
we still miss by a lot. So I would take 5% off the shot and start there and see what happens. Hole number five, I'm going to show you two different ways to play. I was just simply trying to see here if we could take an extra mile nine and a zerk and get from fairway to fairway. But here I make my pull, I push the max. Uh, not a whole lot to see there. Um, as you can see, I'm going to go with almost full OP. Uh, not that bad of a great shot either, just barely great to the left. We hit the fairway, and then, you know, unfortunately, we just get stuck a little bit. It might be possible to make it, um, you know, I mean, it, you could definitely make it, I think, with like a bubble ball or, or a win four power five ball. But, you know, I'm not going to do that in a qualifying round for sure. Um, but either way, you know, again, this one, that's our opponent shot. This one here as my first attempt at the hole. And I'm only showing you this with the Nirvana to set up how I actually played with my other account. Here I'm going with almost two back and I'm offsetting to the left-hand side because of that headwind push to the right. I hit a perfect ball out of the rough, which was nice. And then I just missed to the right. So got pretty close to eagling it out of the rough anyways. But now we'll check this out here. Um, as you can see, I'm going to play with a rock this time and I'm going to go 10% at minimum. So we're going to go with the rock 10% at minimum, make this an easy drive, one back, no side spin, one back, no side spin, pretty straightforward, right? Perfect ball. Okay. Now we go to shot number two and what's cool about shot number two here is you can actually find your minimum distance line. Uh, with your grizzly in your bag. So now we get to play this just boom, straight up at minimum distance. It can't be an easier adjustment than that. And so I figured since I missed to the right hand side out of the rough with the wind push, you know, the only thing is we're only getting four and a half miles per hour here. So I did the same type of offset. You see here I'm, I'm offsetting to the left hand side. But I guess at the end of the day, we may not need as big of an offset here when we're taking this one with our sniper because unfortunately, you know, I think that ball went, I mean, right damn near where I aimed at. So that one may play true. You might just want to aim straight up dead center of the hole and try to get that one to drop. That takes you right in here to hole number six. Hole number six, I didn't have a um, any type of hook slice or whatever saved. So I'm just playing this one regular for now, hopefully. I've got a wind angle with a shot later on that we hopefully that we get, but we're going to go three left, one top, yellow ring on the rough, 10% max. See that curl? We're just going to curl right there till the left edge of our ball covers up the target zone. Perfect ball, and we land right here in the shadows, okay? Shot number two. 10% at minimum. This is another minimum distance shot, which is really nice. It makes your adjustment super easy. Notice the backspin here. Look at that. So you're going to see that even though with a minus 14, man, we really leave a lot of shots like really close to the pin. Like, look at this one. Oh, we got the zoom in. So, you know, there we just aim a little bit more right than what I did, and you should be good there for another really good opportunity to drop a shot. This one is, this one is tough, man. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of this hole, never have been. But here we're going to go with three bars of size spin to the left and four back. And, you know, on my first attempt, I actually aimed on the left-hand side of the hole because I had a replay from a previous tournament where that offset was really close to getting the hole in one. This is a very, very similar wind angle to it, but I missed barely to the left. So this time I got the end of my ball guideline in the left-hand side of the hole. Perfect ball. And look at this one now. Now I miss right there. Zoom in again, <laughs> just barely to the right. So, you know, we might need to just set the edge of our ball guideline right outside the left-hand side of the cup 
that one's really close too. I mean, lots of shots, really close. You're not going to see many people pick up the hole in one on this one. You know, I'd say, you know, in a 20 man bracket, you might see one person, you know, maybe zero people pick up a hole in one on that hole. Um, and now we go to hole number eight. You know, hole number eight is an easy eagle. I did pick this up on both my accounts. I'm going to show you both shots just because the wind angles are different. Um, but here we're going to go four and a half top, three right. Uh, you might be wondering why we're not pushing the drive harder. I'll show you why in a second. It's because in tailwind, uh, we don't want to get too much distance and put us in wedge range. We want to stay in thorn range. So here, yellow ring on the rough, four and a half top, three right. Notice the curl. This time look at the left edge of my ball. Notice where the left edge is touching that target window, just like that. Perfect ball, and we're good on the fairway. So hit perfect on both my accounts. But look at this wind angle here. This one is, you know, tailwind right to left. It's, it's almost good tailwind. And this one right here, this one is almost more tailwind. Look at that. So this one's almost straight up tailwind. See that? To whereas this one is, is a little bit more crosswind. Okay, it's not much. It's a 15% variance that you get. But, you know, the slightest things can throw shots off. But I do want to show you how good this one plays, even in two slightly different wind angles. We're going to go with, you know, three and a half back. Listen, the most important thing I can tell you on this hole is the ball guideline really stinks, okay? Um, again, it's very glitchy. The one thing that we can do on this hole is we can use the fringe. The fringe is our friend. Um, you want to bounce off the fringe into the hole like this. Perfect ball, got to do that. But look at that, fringe, thank you. Two bounces, let's go. Right hand side of the cup. This is the other account, same thing. Remember that, fringe is your friend. This one, look at this backspin, about three and a half, almost the same as the other one. Ball guy line, squared up, center of the hole. And you see how I make sure the end of my ball guy line is going to the back of the cup? That's always so important on your thorn because you know that ball can stop on a dime with the backspin so you got to make sure that it, your shot is set up correctly through the pin with your thorn because you don't want to come up short but here we go again fringe bounce bounce roll thank you very much all right so there's your eagle on hole number eight takes us to hole number nine people are going to hate hole number nine this one's going to eat a lot of people up so here's what we're doing okay first of all we're going to go 10 percent at max Eight and a half mile per hour wind, I think that's the highest we can get in pro with a P1 ball. Uh, with a P5 ball, I mean wind resistance one. All right, so check this out. We're gonna go right here. Look at this backspin. Two right, what do you wanna call that, 0.4 back? 10%, man, remember the 10%. Don't accidentally do 0% because the 10% is like an extra half a ring or so, maybe even more in higher wind. And we get too close for comfort. We hit a perfect ball, which means we're gonna gain maximum distance on the drive. I want you to add more backspin to this shot in higher wind, because look at this. That's a little too close for comfort. We might wanna go with 0.6 back, okay? Because shot number two, we're gonna play with our guardian. And let me explain to you what we're doing. We're gonna go with a controlled overpower shot. All we wanna do is just land on the green. So we're gonna go with heavy backspin, right? You see that? Heavy backspin. And the thing that you wanna do here is look at my, look at my target. Look how I'm in the middle of that fairway. Um, see the fairway before the, the fringe and the green? You wanna be centered up right there on that, just like that. And then you're gonna pull this one 10%. You see me really double checking. I know what I'm thinking in my head. And I just can't really explain it while I'm making the video. Um, and then I don't push. I do not push. I just take a controlled overpower shot. Pull your rings. Don't push it back up. And look at this. This is nice. That's all we're trying to do. You can even add more backspin and be closer to the hole. Uh, but that's it. I hope you found the video helpful. And I hope you subscribe. That would be cool. And please hit the thumbs up button. 
Let me know how you do in the comments. Hey, thanks, everybody.